Hey, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com with a look at the Super Mad Drift from Exceed RC. This is a ready to run electric drift car with a twist. It's actually 1 8th scale, not the usual 1 10th scale. It's based on a 1 8th scale buggy platform. With the body on, it's two feet long and one foot wide, and the wheelbase is just short of 13 inches. But for all that physical size, the price is surprisingly small. There's one version that's just $210, and then there's the one that I got, which is $250, ready to run. As it turns out, there are very few differences between the two versions, and the biggest difference being the shocks. The cheaper version comes with plastic-bodied shocks that require preload clips, and this one has big bore shocks with threaded aluminum bodies. They both give you a number of mounting options, both top and bottom. The car has adjustable steel turnbuckles all the way around, so you can adjust your camber as well as your front toe. Center and rear drive shafts are steel dog bones, while the fronts are universals. To make this a drift car, naturally they outfitted it with hard drift tires. It's a solid molded plastic compound, but it's a little bit softer than your standard ABS. The design is proprietary as the tire actually bolts to the wheel, but the car has regular 17mm hubs, so you can use any standard 8th scale buggy or on-road car rims. The motor is a 2150 kV, 36 by 65 millimeter, basically 550 size, sensorless unit. It seems a little small for a vehicle of this size. The ESC is a Hobbywing 80 amp unit, and that has some basic programmability that you can access through an optional, not included programming card. This servo I can't tell you much about other than it's slow and weak. A pair of standard sized 7.4 volt hard case lipo packs straddle the center drive line. They get connected together in series at the ESC. These two 3300 milliamp hour 20C lipos are included with that $250 price tag. The radio set is pretty cheap, but it is 2.4 gigahertz and it does have dual rate adjustment. One of the nice things about drift cars is that it's really hard to get them wrong. As long as the vehicle has four-wheel drive and hard tires, you can drift. The Exceed Super Mad Drift makes no exception to that formula, even though it's based on a 1 8 scale off-road buggy platform. Because of the very hard tires, you don't pick up much speed, and as it turns out, that small motor and the weak batteries are just fine. The car actually has more power than it needs. The out-of-the-box setup has the chassis raised up pretty high off the ground, and the body higher still. This translates to a lot of weight transfer, and with off-road spec springs and shocks, you also get a lot of body roll. These together quickly surface probably the worst setup problem of the car out of the box. Really loose diffs. I haven't opened them up yet, but they have either very thin silicone or just grease. Sometimes the car will push too much in turns if you apply power as one front tire just unloads. You can certainly make this a much better drifter with some thicker silicone oil for the diffs, especially in the rear and by getting everything closer to the ground. Honestly though, this out of the box setup is not all that bad. With its odd size, I know it's not going to appeal to the really professional, really serious drifter who's always gonna go for the 190 or 200 millimeter standard 1 10th scale size. So for a casual parking lot drifter, this thing is perfectly fine. Myself, honestly, I'm not that big into drifting, so I was really curious to see how it would do in some different configurations. Here I put on some rubber grip style tires from a company called Sweep. I also lowered the body a little bit, which required slight trimming to the front foam bumper, and I mounted the shocks further outward to stiffen them up. With rubber tires, I was actually able to get some speed runs in, and the car topped out at about 35 miles per hour with the stock gearing and stock batteries. It got around the local on-road track pretty well, but it still had a lot of body roll. Elite racers will hate that, but to me it just seemed realistic and it's actually fun to drive like this. It has pretty respectable acceleration and great brakes. With the tires warm, the car has understeer both on throttle and on the brakes, while it's a little bit better at neutral throttle. On another test day, I tried a different tuning setup. Still using stock suspension components, I was able to tidy up the car's handling quite a bit. I did swap in a Power HD 1501 servo though, that cost 12 bucks. With this round of changes, I picked up a little bit more positive traction at the front and also loosened the rear just slightly. This let me drive it with a little bit more aggressiveness and consistency. You'll notice the car is carrying a little bit more speed through the turns and it's hugging the corners more closely. For my next tune-up, I actually jacked up the ride height and put on some old buggy tires. These are Proline Badlands, well used, many years old on some old Ofna wheels. Apart from those wheels and tires, everything else is still stock, except for the $12 servo. 
The Mad Drift had become a mad rally car. Basically now it was drifting on dirt and gravel instead of tarmac. And it was great fun throwing up rooster tails all over the place. However, this is still really flat ground while real rally cars tend to jump a lot. So how's this? Most purpose-built RC rally cars are actually pretty poor over jumps and need to stay within a foot or so of terra firma. This drift car, on the other hand, handled the 1/8 scale off-road track at NorCal Hobbies as well as most 1/8 scale entry-level buggies, if not better. And this was still with those old, hardened, motocross-style off-road tires, not even good tires for a track. The only thing really holding back the super mad drift out of here was the big old body kind of acts like a parachute when you're coming down from a big jump. Not quite as bad as a short course truck though. Oh, speaking of short course trucks, this is my fourth tune of the Super Mad Drift car. Here I threw on some DE Racing short course wheels with 17mm hubs and some Proline Taser tires. The body is a Proline Flotec that you've seen before if you've watched my videos for a while. Here I finally did spend some money on some new chassis parts. They're just to support the short course looks though. I got the front bumper and body mounts from the Exceed RC Mad Bash. That's one of their short course trucks that's based on this same buggy chassis. I could have gone on and on like this. You can attach a wing and turn this into a buggy, or stretch out the length and width and put on some big tires and you got yourself a full on truggy. But I digress. This is a review of a drift car. And as a drift car, it's pretty cool. Good, but not great. What is great about it is that you can do anything you can think of with it. As a big 1 8 scale drift car, brushless with lipo packs, the $250 price tag is amazing. And if you don't plan on taking big jumps with this car, you might as well just get the $210 version. It just has smaller shocks and slightly different upper chassis braces. When you consider all the things that you can do with this car, now its value is just off the charts. The biggest thing that concerned me about this car is that the buggy it's based on is called the Mad Fire. Now I reviewed the Mad Fire quite some time ago and it performed really well, but its durability was piss poor. The fiber reinforced plastic material that they used for most of the parts was just terrible. I gave Exceed a lot of detailed and very frank feedback about that. They acknowledged it and I never heard anything from them again. Thankfully it looks like my feedback did not fall on deaf ears. Though all these parts are still using the same molds, the plastic compound is different. It's much softer now most importantly, much tougher. The weakest thing on this car now is the body. It's actually made of PVC, not Lexan. If you put grip tires on it and start crashing into hard objects, the body will start to crack. I recommend shoring up both the front and rear ends with shuku and drywall tape. You can find a whole video about that process on my channel. All in all though, this car is a big win for Exceed. The out of the box setup isn't perfect, but you can tune it up and you get way more than you pay for. So thanks for watching this review. I hope they had good information for you. Please hit the like button on the video bar if you liked the video, or if you didn't, please hit the thumbs down button. Either way helps me out the same. If you haven't yet, please hit subscribe to get updates of new videos as I put them out, and try checking out the friendly forums at ultimatercom Catch you later.